So hello and welcome to the mini video series of the LTE and 802.11 application framework of the version 1.1. In this video I will demonstrate how to use the LTE application framework video streaming using the two device setup. So as you can see I just created two instances of the LTE application framework for the hardware USRP Rio 40 MHz. So just create the project which fits to your hardware. And also you see that per default the downlink only operation mode opens. So this can be also used in a double device setup, but what is more interesting is the eNodeB and the UE operation mode. So on the right side I will open the UE host implementation and on the left side I will open the eNodeB host implementation. Now the first thing that we have to change is the Rio device setting because now if we have two devices at least one of the settings will be wrong for the device. So in my case I have to change even both. So the left USRP Rio in my system has the name Rio 1 and the right one has the name Rio 2. Also I have to change the transmit and receive port according to the cabling of my system. So now after I did these changes, I can now start the host implementations by clicking the run button. If you open the project for the first time, it can happen that this message window pops up. And now you can also start the UE host. Also here, if you run it for the first time, this message window will pop up, but it will disappear soon. Now also the host application for the second USRP Rio is running. We verify that the bit file was loaded to both devices by having a look at the FPGA ready indicator. We can see that it's on and that we are now able to actually start our transmitter and receiver so to actually perform the data transmission and reception. The first thing that we will do is to start the eNodeB transmitter because this is the one which actually provides the downlink signal. Now on the UE we want to receive the downlink signal and that is why we enable the UE receiver. And as you can see we have a receive power spectrum which matches the transmitted power spectrum. And also we see the constellation of the data channel and as you can see it's the 64 QAM and this matches what we have set at the transmitter. So when now the UE is receiving the downlink signal, it can also provide an uplink signal and therefore we have to enable the UE transmitter. We see here that we have set the resource block allocation so that only the first three bits are set. So this means that just the first 12 resource blocks of the signal are allocated and we are using the lowest MCS, MCS0 for uplink because this enables a really robust transmission. Now we enable the receiver and we will see that we now receive the signal which we transmit from the UE. On the right side we will see the reporting of the UE, we will see different things, we will see the subband SINR values, so this is the signal to interference noise ratio and currently it's very constant at 30 dB and this is because we use a cabled setup. If you would do over the air transmission then you would see different values across the band. And we also see the wide band SINR and we also see the throughput of this uplink transmission and this is a result of this resource block allocation which we have set for the uplink transmission and the MCS which we have set for the uplink transmission. So as you can see the 12 resource blocks and MCS 0 result in a throughput of 0.33 megabit per second. And we also see the reported downlink block error rate. This is the error rate of the data channel reception of the UE and as you can see it's all zero. Now what we could do is, because now we have an uplink transmission running, 
we could enable the rate adaptation, which would set the modulation encoding scheme according to the received wideband SNR. So currently we have MCS17. When we now will enable the rate adaptation, what you will see is that the MCS increases, and this is because the system knows because of this high wideband SINR value that actually also a higher MCS is possible and that the UE will still be able to receive the um, signal with the higher modulation order and also with a higher code rate. So let's enable the rate adaptation and you will see that the modulation encoding scheme goes up to 28 and this is still a 64QM constellation but you will see from the throughput that now we have a higher throughput available. So far we didn't provide user data so this is why I now want to start my video streaming batch files. I start the stream video LTE batch file and this provides data to the eNode B host application. So this is now receiving data. So you can see that the data transfer in indicator is on and they are now seen as user data in this throughput graph. This is the blue curve. And now we want to receive the data which is received by the UE from the downlink transmission. And therefore we go to the batch files again and choose the play video LTE batch file. This will open the player which receives now data from the UE and as you can see the player opens and it displays the video. If we would disable the receiver then the video would stop and also if we would disable the transmitter then also the video would stop. So I hope that now you are able to run the video streaming also with a two device setup of the LT application framework. And this concludes this video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.